Okay, let's try this one more time. Sorry about this, you guys. Okay, so going back, <laughs> just so everyone gets it. Um, so starting over, these are my own pets. Um, I have Flicka, who is my Dun Quarter Horse mare. Um, I have Daphne and Velma. They are my female guinea pigs. And then I have Lulu. Um, she is a Yorkie Karen Terrier mix. Um, and she was a rescue. And all of these animals really helped me kind of learn my passion for working with animals, um, both large and small. So I will get into kind of a little bit about how I got started. Um, so I graduated from UNL with a bachelor's in companion animal science in December of 2018. Um, I did it a little bit backwards because after I went to UNL, I did decide to go back to um, tech school. And um, a lot of people actually go to tech school right out of high school. Um, so I went to Northeast Community College in Norfolk, Nebraska. Um, I graduated this past May. And after that, I moved to Sioux Falls, South Dakota um, to do my internship hours at Dakota Large Animal Clinic in Harrisburg, South Dakota. Um, a little bit about this clinic, it was a really good experience. Um, it, they do 90% equine medicine and then 10% small animals, so dogs and cats. Um, some of my tasks that I did there, um, I helped assist with lab work and collecting samples, um, all kinds of different samples. We had fecal, urine, um, blood, skin samples, tissue samples, kind of whatever they needed. Um, I would help calculate and administer drugs for surgeries and hospitalized patients. Um, I did help surgically prep the patients, both large and small animals, and monitor anesthesia. Um, and we actually were at a facility that we could perform um, equine surgeries, which was really cool because not a lot of clinics have obviously the capability of lifting up a horse and placing them on the surgery table. So that was a really cool experience. Um, I helped fill prescriptions. I assisted with x-rays in both horses and dogs and cats. Um, and then I was in charge of keeping track of exam notes um, and monitoring patients in the medical records if we had any hospitalized patients. Um, I prepped the exam rooms for appointments, um, just got whatever the doctor needed for the appointment. Um, and then I would also help load the farm trucks and make sure that they were filled with all the supplies we were going to need. We would have days that we would go out on farm calls and be gone for the entire day. So it was my job just to kind of make sure we had all the meds on hand, um, you know, whatever we need, bandaging materials, cleaning materials, anything like that. Um, I helped assist with restraint and handling for both farm calls and clinic appointments. I helped prep mares for AI and ultrasounds, which that was also really cool. We did um, a lot of breeding mares um, and artificial ins insemination. So that was pretty cool. Um, I helped assist with semen quality checks and collecting from studs. So we would actually get samples and look under the microscope um, just so we could kind of evaluate how fertile that stud was gonna be. Um, obviously there's a lot of money in breeding horses. so. Um, that was pretty cool to get a help with that. And then I also was um, on overnight on calls for emergency surgeries and helping mayors full out, which I did my internship during the spring. And um, that's obviously the main time that mayors are falling out. So I was pretty busy with that. Um, also in large and small animal, you never know when you're going to have the overnight emergency surgery you need to go in for. Um, so you kind of just always have to be ready to be there. Um, so after I finished my internship, I took the VTNE, which stands for the Veterinary Technician National Exam. I did take that this past August and then passed my exam. Um, and then after that, you have to apply for your license. Um, and so I applied in the state of Nebraska to get my LVT, and I currently am a tech at Pet Care Center of Lincoln, um, which we serve mainly small animals. Um, a little bit about the programs that are offered in Nebraska to go to vet tech school. So there is currently only two schools in Nebraska. 
Um, Northeast Community College where I went, which was obviously in Norfolk. Um, the really cool thing about them is they do offer a two-year program and a three-year program. Um, my path was a little bit different since I did complete some classes at UNL. I was actually able to get done with a program in a year and a half, so that was really nice. Um, but having the option to kind of do either a two or three year is really nice. Um, and then we have the normal summer breaks and the holiday breaks, just kind of like every other school. Um, and then the other school is Nebraska College of Technical Agriculture, and that is in Curtis, Nebraska. Um, they, from what I understand, they only offer a two-year program. Um, they do a continuous program and they don't have summer breaks, so you're kind of able to get everything done a little bit faster. Um, some of the courses that I took that really helped prepare me and get me ready, um, obviously you're going to have your anatomy and physiology, medical terminology, um, pharmacology, radiology, lab technology, lab animal science, um, you learn both small and large animal nursing, um, just because we had a lot of people that went either, stuck either just small animal or went just large animal or did a little bit of both. Um, we take an exotics class, so we know how to handle. A lot of people don't have experience with snakes and birds and that kind of thing, so um, we learn how to treat them and handle them. Um, we have a surgery class, a hematology class, parasitology, anesthesia, and the VTNE review class. And that one you take at the end um, just to kind of help prep for your boards. Um, on top of these uh, classes, um, we do have what are called animal care, care patients, which was really awesome. Um, you get tons of hands-on experience. We actually worked with the local pound there and we were given a new patient every week that we were in charge of collecting vitals, doing like a full physical exam, um, getting blood work, um, you know, if they needed medication or something like that, we would be in charge of calculating that and administering it every day. Um, it was just a really good experience to get both practice with dogs and cats. Um, so that was really good. We also have um, surgery patients when you take your surgery class, and that does a really good job of preparing you for interacting with clients um, and kind of going over that surgery paperwork, ask, asking questions about um, history. It's really important to make sure you get thorough histories when you're taking an animal in just because every little piece of information can be vital. And sometimes um, we have clients that aren't really aware that certain pieces are more important than others. Um, so that was really good practice. Um, and so some of my normal daily duties, also I apologize for this picture because it's a little bit graphic, um, but it's definitely one that I thought was really cool. Um, so some of my normal daily duties that I perform right now, um, you check in surgery patients. We normally do that every morning. We go over paperwork with the client just to make sure, um, again, that we have a thorough history and that the owner knows exactly what the procedure entails, um, what to expect before and after surgery and that kind of thing. Um, and then we prepare and collect necessary equipment for appointments. Um, a big part of our job is restraining and helping the doctor with the exam. Um, sometimes they'll ask you to do certain things so they can evaluate a certain part of the body, um, you know, and just making sure our job is to protect the doctor. So definitely making sure you have good restraining skills. Um, that's really important. Um, a huge part of our job is collecting the vitals on patients and recording the exam notes. Um, everything is a medical record, so it's really important that we get as much information down as we can. So if we have to go back, um, you know, if you're not working one day and another doctor or nurse has question on something, it's really important to be thorough in your notes just so even if you weren't there, you can kind of know what was happening during that appointment. Um, we use a system called Avamark, which is pretty common in a lot of clinics. Um, we're also in charge of converting, um, doing basic conversion calculations for different drugs. 
um, especially with our surgery patients every morning. We're in charge of doing those, getting the weight, making sure we have the correct drugs on hand um, and the correct drugs pulled up. We are in charge of administering medications, drugs, vaccines to patients. Um, in Nebraska, we legally can administer any vaccine besides rabies. Um, so normally, if we have just an appointment for a Bordetella or a Lepto vaccine, um, we're the ones that are giving it. We perform normal inventory counts for both controlled and uncontrolled drugs, which is super important um, just because we do work closely with the DEA and you want to make sure you're keeping track of those controlled drugs. Um, we fill prescriptions and order out scripts for our clients. Um, and like I said before, we collect a lot of samples. That's why I included this picture. Um, just because if you have something that you are not, you know, you need to do some further lab work, you can look under the microscope. Um, we do a lot of like blood collection to make sure um, the organs are functioning co correctly. Um, and that's a really big part of this job. Um, also prepping samples. Um, we're normally the ones we collect, we'll prep we look under the microscope and then normally we'll report to the doctor, um, hey, this is what I saw, that kind of thing. And then if we have any questions, a lot of the times the doctors will go back and look over things. Um, and then we're in charge of packaging and sending out the samples as well. Um, and it's really important to make sure you're prepping the samples the right way because if they get to the lab and you don't include an ice pack with something that can go bad or it's not packaged correctly, um, and the patient has already left, it's kind of hard to get them to come back to collect another sample. So that job's very important too. Um, one of our biggest jobs is preparing our patients for surgeries and assisting the doctors in surgeries, which is probably my favorite part. Um, we're in charge of placing the IV catheters, intubating the patients. Um, we give all the pre-anesthetic and induction agents before surgery. Um, we clip and surgical scrub the patients, and then we're in charge of monitoring the anesthesia and recovering the patients. Um, you know, the doctor's there to perform the actual surgery, so making sure that the patient's staying stable and steady throughout is our job. And, you know, if something, um, if they're starting to wake up, you know, we have to be the ones paying attention to that and know what the next step is, so that's pretty cool. Um, we also perform the dental cleanings in radiographs of the teeth, um, which I included pictures of um, one of my patients from last week um, of before the dental cleaning and then after, um, which that wasn't the worst one I've seen by any means, but it's kind of cool to see um, a lot of these dogs will come in and their teeth just look terrible. And then after you clean them up, they can really look nice and um, definitely having good oral health helps contribute to good overall health as well. Um, we're also in charge of preparing the surgical packs and instruments um, and then checking the machines weekly to make sure that they're running correctly so we're getting uh, accurate results such as our uh, CBC machine, our blood chemistry machine, the autoclave, the urinalysis machine, um, things like that. Um, also, communication is super important with clients about different treatment options and co costs. Um, it's not always the most fun thing, but it definitely um, is very important to be upfront with our clients and, you know, work with them and try to figure out a plan that is the best option for both the client and the animal. Um, we're also, ve it's very important to do client education because a lot of people have a lot of questions. Um, so that's our job to kind of educate them. We also are in charge of capturing the x-ray images and sending them off to radiologists, um, both dental and full body. Um, we assist with ultrasounds. We perform cold laser therapy. And then we uh, have a lot of hospitalized patients. So we're in charge of making sure, um, do they need to be on IV fluids, calculating that out, um, making sure that we change bags when they're needed, um, administering medications or injections, performing blood draws, force feeding, things like that. Whatever that patient needs, that's kind of our job to be there. 
Um, I included this slide because a lot of people have questions. You'll see LVT, CVT, or RVT. And basically these all um, mean the same thing. It's all you have to take a state standardized test um, and you're licensed. Um, it just kind of depends on where you're located in the country, what you're going to be called. Um, also, in some states, you do not legally have to be licensed to perform the duties of technician. Um, but in Nebraska, you obviously do. Um, and then how do you know if this career is a good fit? I get asked that a lot. Um, it is a really, really challenging career at times. Um, it definitely, you put in a lot of work. The hours are very long normally. Um, you have to be available most of the time on weekend and holidays, kind of depending on what clinic setting you're in. Um, some clinics you have overnight on calls. Um, if you're working in large animal, a lot of the times you don't get to choose um, where you work and that kind of thing. So the working conditions can be really hard if you're going on a farm call in the middle of winter. Um, most clinics say you need to be able to lift at least 50 pounds. Um, my advice is job shadow like crazy. Um, every clinic is so different and just getting yourself in different clinics, um, you know, a small animal, a large animal, one that does exotics, that kind of thing, I think is really important to find a good fit and really see the extent of this career. Um, volunteering at shelters can be very helpful, seeing shelter medicine. Um, and then I would definitely recommend working in different clinics or boarding facilities just to get better um, handling experience with different animals. Not every animal is the easiest to work with. Um, kind of the benefits of this career or why I enjoy it so much, um, the client and patient relationships that you build are really amazing. Um, we work with some really great people and obviously getting to know these animals and watch them grow and um, be there for them is really cool. Um, I really like how diverse this career is. You are doing different duties every day, which is nice. And it's very hands-on, which I like that type of career. Um, there's also different career paths once you're licensed. So if you kind of, um, a lot of people talk about being burnt out in a clinic after a few years, um, you can always work in a lab, um, always change it up and go and work large animal or small, small animal. Um, there's also drug like pharmaceutical companies you can work for. So there's always um, different things you can do to switch it up. Um, and I think, that was all I had. Um, does anyone have any questions kind of about the process or what the career entails in general? Does anyone have any questions on Zoom, Abigail or Emily? Uh, no, I think you covered everything, thanks. Well, if you guys want to come back and watch this video, we'll actually have the recording of this on our YouTube page for those of you that weren't able to get on or would like to 